Thanks. Um, in the couple minutes left, I'm just going to talk very briefly about some of the uh, issues in New York in terms of getting access to court opinions. Uh, New York is actually, I think, one of the better states in terms of making available its highest court, the, which is the New York Court of Appeals, um, the highest court opinions online. That actually started um, in 1999, the year I was Solicitor General of New York. We actually worked with the Court of Appeals to start making their opinions available online. It used to be that you'd have to send somebody down to the court, get you know, pick up pick up a physical copy of of the opinion. But um, so that started changing. I mean, just to set the stage, I mean, the sheer volume of decisions and appeals and court decisions, obviously, that are rendered at the state court level versus the federal court level. Um, the federal courts of appeals, uh, the decisions have generally been available in, in you know, online format and West format for, for quite a while. But 18 million um, new civil cases are filed every year in the state courts. So that's just civil cases, which are one-fifth of the total of new cases at the state level. More than 90 percent of human disputes are resolved at the state court level. And yet, as, as by um, the predecessors on this panel have stated, the vast majority of those opinions are not available readily online. Um, in terms of the specific challenges, even when court decisions are made available online, uh, some examples from New York. So in New York, you have four appellate divisions, which are the intermediate state court uh, of appeals, from which you know there's an appeal as of right. So every every decision can be appealed to the intermediate state court. The four appellate divisions render roughly dozens. Each of them renders roughly dozens of appellate uh, appe appellate decisions every day. Um, so again, we're talking about a vast volume. The vast majority of these, I would say maybe 80, 90 percent of these, are simply affirmed or uh, the, the, the decision that's rendered is affirmed on the basis of the strength of the trial court opinion. So you often have a one or two paragraph decision in the appellate division simply affirming, stating it that on the basis of the trial court's decision, uh, the analysis is, is affirmed. Uh, but yet, the ability to actually get the underlying reasoning um, is is very difficult because of that that mode of operating. So this appellate court decision case name is often different from what you find at the trial court. There's often no docket number associated with what the appellate division says is affirmed below. Uh, there's no date of the lower court's opinion. There will be a court, for example, they'll say uh, Supreme Court New York County. But the ability to actually go back and find that underlying opinion is extremely difficult. So the only way to really do it is to run a full search, not even just a case name search, but a full search um, on Lexis or Westlaw, which is hundreds of dollars. Um, so even to get an appellate division decision and to, underline, and to understand the underlying rationale behind it is very, very difficult. Um, Again, and, and it's the same thing also because a lot of times the appellate division will affirm on the strength of the briefs, uh, the, the appellant's brief or the app appellee's brief. And again, there's no access to the briefs. So the ability to get the underlying reasoning in the vast majority of cases at the state court level uh, is, is seriously compromised. Even at the court of appeals uh, level, which is the highest state court in New York, um, now, you know, as I said, since 1999, the decisions themselves have been um, available online on the same day. Uh, but one of the greatest challenges in a state like New York, which has, you know, the, the precedential impact of the court decisions is quite large. Um, one of the great challenges is figuring out what issues are pending before the New York Court of Appeals, before an opinion is rendered. So, for example, um, in order to determine amicus participation, if, if you're uh, you know, a, a participant in an industry or a nonprofit group that may have interest in the pending precedential, uh, the, the precedential effect of pending court cases, there's virtually no way to get a quick glimpse of what's, what is coming up on the New York Court of Appeals docket. And the reason for that is that the petitions, what, what are the equivalent of the petitions for certiorari, the petitions for review in the Court of Appeals, those are not published. Uh, when a decision is accepted, an appellate court decision is accepted for review, the fact of the review will be noted, but there's no, again, there's no citation to the lower court opinion. There's just a simple three or four words that will state the issues in that opinion, for example, the parole evidence rule or capital punishment, but not a statement of what the particular issue is. So the ability for practitioners or nonprofit groups that regularly monitor the work of the courts to get a glimpse of what's pending on the court docket and what cases uh, someone should weigh in on is, is very, very limited. Um, in terms of the statutes, regs, and codes, 
uh, the New York State statutes, uh, the, the state legislature's statutes are available on the state legislature's website um, and a number of other websites, I believe on the Cornell website as well. Um, but again, and I don't have, I don't have the breakdown of, of everything from at the regs and the code level, but I do know that the vast majority of municipalities do not have their uh, regs and codes available online. So again, we're talking about a state as large as New York, uh, one in which the precedential impact of a lot of the court decisions and um, uh, can have a vast effect. Um, those those kinds of materials simply are not available online. So, in my current role, which at OMB, um, working with other White House components, actively monitoring the work of Law.gov, and we're eager to take suggestions about how the federal government can be a leader in terms of uh, spurring this kind of a movement on.